What is going on you guys? This is Hong here with Hong Yang Loon Fitness and today we are gonna be talking about the importance of cross training. So as you know, running is my primary favorite sport, but outside of running for seven years now, I have been doing mountain biking. This is the beautiful Bison Butte mountain bike trail in Winnipeg, Manitoba, and it was made for the 2017 Canada Summer Games. The reason I wanna talk about this is because in running, it is a very weight-bearing impact sport and it impacts the knee joints, the ankle joints, and it impacts tendons like the Achilles tendon, especially for someone like me, a forefoot striker. As for a rear foot striker, it would cause more impact on the heels and the knees causing plantar fasciitis. For something like cycling, is a lot less impact on the joints than something like running. However, for mountain biking, it can be a very different story based on how a rider rides and what type of bike he uses and what type of trails they're riding on. I like mountain biking as a cross-training method due to the pure enjoyment. Without further ado, let me show you some of the jumps I'll be tackling today. So we just finished this one and this one. Now we're going to do the little slope over here and then I'll show you more that Bison Butte has to offer. The next one we're going to do is this drop off here. It's actually really steep. It doesn't look like it from this perspective, but in real, if you know, you know, I'm going to, you can either go on the left, the line on the right hand side or on the left hand side. There we go. Got our bike. Front tire is good, back tire has a flat tire. I also found out that I broke one of the spokes. So today we're gonna show you how to replace that. So we have been walking home and we're almost home. So that's really nice. The first thing we're gonna do is we are going to release the quick release skewer right here. After we release that, we have already put our bike into the smallest cog on the cassette, which is this one. And then we're gonna pull the derailleur this way push it back and we're gonna pull the wheel out. We got our rear tire with the disc brake. We got the quick release skewer off. Here's everything you're gonna to need to help replace the spoke and repair the flat tire. You're gonna need Allen keys and that's gonna remove your disc brake rotor. You're gonna to need, to need a chain whip and a cassette removal tool. And they're gonna help remove the cassette and as well as an adjustable wrench to use on the chain, to use on the cassette removal tool. You're gonna to need a, 29er inner tube with the Presta valve, which is the same as the one that is on this bike here. As well, if your bike uses a 27.5, you're gonna need a 27.5 tube. You're also gonna need spare spoke nipples. You're gonna need spare spokes that are the same size as for your wheel, for your 29er wheel or whatever wheel you have. You're also gonna need a bicycle pump. And last but not least, you're gonna need tire levers to pull off the old tire. Insert both of your tire levers and you're going to pull this one counterclockwise. Once it's in there good, you should be able to just pull it off right with your fingers. The old inner tube was punctured too large, so we're going to throw it away. This bike used to have a tubeless setup, but not anymore. I decided to keep the old Presta valve, but other than that, all of this is garbage. I didn't have any um, inner tube. I didn't have any rim tape or anything. I used Gorilla Tape and now I'm going to use a knife and I'm going to tear it off. And it's totally okay to use Gorilla Tape as long as you cut it to spec. Use some wipes and make sure the inside of the rim is wiped clean and make sure there's nothing spiky or sharp that could puncture the next inner tube. Once you're done that, feel the inside of your bike tire and make sure there's nothing sharp or spiky where if you put in your new inner tube, it will puncture the new inner tube. So we are using four mil Allen keys and we're gonna remove the six Allen key bolts and we're gonna pull the rotor off. Remember the orientation that the rotor comes in. So make sure that the rotor is facing this direction as opposed to this direction. Have your chain whip wrapped around in this direction counterclockwise. You are going to turn the adjustable wrench counterclockwise and turn the chain whip clockwise. And now just like that, your cassette is removed. This one is the bicycle spoke that we broke. We're gonna replace it. Let's take a look at how it goes. So this one, it faces up and then that means, and this one's also facing up. That means this one needs to hook downwards. Luckily, we found this one. This one is new and it's the exact same length as the old broken one. So here's how we're gonna put it in. 
First, we stick it in from the other side. That's why you need to remove both the rotor and the cassette. Next, you need to bend it a little bit so that just like this one you see here, it goes under, it goes under the one that faces up. So we're gonna need this spoke to go right under this one. Now we have our spoke nipple, and now we're gonna stick our spoke nipple in this way so that our spoke nipple comes out this way. So what you need to do is you need to tighten your nipple clockwise. Sorry, I made a mistake. I mean to say tighten the nipple clockwise from this orientation. So if you're using the tool and you're facing this direction, I need you to tighten your nipple counterclockwise so that it'll bind to the spoke. A reference for this key is the smaller the number means the wider the gap. So number 15 has the smallest gap and number 10 has the biggest gap for the biggest nipples. It is connected on. I don't have a spoke tension measuring tool on me, but usually I feel by hand and I'm usually pretty good at feeling. It's a very bad way to do it, but it's a rough estimate to make sure that all the nipples are pulling tightly on the spoke tensions. I made this Gorilla Tape wide enough so that it covers over all of this inner lining of this rim. We're gonna wrap it twice and then we're gonna punch a hole right here. And that's because we're that's where the Presta valve of our inner tube sits. Now you should have poked a hole here where the Presta valve's gonna go after lining up your Gorilla Tape. And now we're gonna put the inner tube on. Pre-inflate the inner tube so that it makes the shape. Place your inner tube into your tire after checking that the inside of your tire is free from any sharp things that can puncture this brand new inner tube. I put the little metal ring on to secure it and it's gonna need you to use your hands to force it in, but it's gonna go in. After a while, after you force it in, it should be able to fit right in and then you're gonna need to pull on your valve and then tighten the little ring even more. Now that your tire is well inflated, make sure that this ring is tight and that the valve is nicely closed. Now tighten these six bolts in a star pattern to make sure your rotor is on tight. So you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six. There is a very special pattern on this free hub, on this cassette hub, and that's how you need to put the cassette back on. Turn this clockwise with your adjustable wrench and that is gonna tighten the cassette onto the cassette hub for the wheel. Pull the derailleur back, pull this derailleur cage back this way, insert it so that the rotor goes inside the brake caliper and that the cassette, the smallest cog here, which was what we removed it with, lines up with the chain. Insert your quick release skewer. After tightening it to an appropriate amount, once you think it's tight enough, push the lever down for the skewer. Congratulations, now your bike is fully functional. And that's all for today. My hands are pretty dirty. Thanks for watching you guys. I'll see you guys on the next one.